Hello, my name is Vesai Ivonen and in this video we'll have a look on the, how to configure Office 365 CDN and how to get started from an administrative perspective and how to use those CDN uh, capabilities uh, from a UI perspective in SharePoint Online. So let's actually get started right away with the demo and the configuration. So we're going to actually walk through how to enable uh, CDN and how we can then verify that it's enabled and how we can use that within the SharePoint Online. So in my case, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code, uh, which is a great uh, tool for writing PowerShell commandlets or PowerShell scripts as well. It's obviously up to you, which is what is your preference uh, for your script development. Um, and the first step uh, is or to connect to your Office 365 at tenant administrative site or SharePoint Online administrative site. In my case, that is VesaJ admin, um, and typically it's uh, whatever is their uh, tenant name and then the admin as a post fix for that one. So let's actually connect connect to my tenant admin as site. So I'm going to execute that by clicking F8 for my uh, keyboard, and then I'm going to sign in, sign in to my tenant using my administrative uh, information. So there we go. If you would be using uh, whatever multi-factor authentication models and all of that, this UI would actually reflect those changes as well. So let's sign in. Uh, and then we are pretty much good to go on enabling or configuring uh, the Office 365 CDN for your tenant. We can easily check that the connection to the tenant uh, is available by, for example, executing get SPO tenant command, uh, which will then show the default settings or the current settings of my tenant in Office 365. Now, ca we can first check uh, if, uh, if the CDN is enabled. So let's actually execute uh, the, the get SPO tenant CDN enabled commandlet. And there's a switch with the CDN type. So I can actually do that for public and also for private. Or in my case, let's execute both of them uh, at the one execution. So we can see that the, both of these uh, configurations or both of the CDNs uh, are in full status. And this is the default setting uh, within all of the Office 365 tenants. So we're not enabling CDN by default for anybody. Uh, you can control that by yourself or the tenant administrator has to enable that within a tenant. Now, how do we then actually enable the tenant? Now, we have provided the super simplistic uh, commandlet which is set SPO tenant CDN enabled uh, and uh, you can just provide the CDN type which you want to enable. One thing to notice here uh, is that a no default origin option uh, which you can actually provide as a parameter for this commandlet. So no default origins would be the, the option for none. And that will make sure that uh, we're not actually enabling default options uh, for that CDN type. So as an example, uh, for the public CDN, we are enabling the master pages and style library as the default uh, origins for your CDN. If you do not want to do that, uh, you can flip that uh, or control that by using that parameter in a command line. But in my case, uh, I don't really mind. Uh, so I'm going to actually enable for both the public and private CDNs uh, right away. So let's actually do that uh, right away. Uh, it is actually showing, uh, obviously, the, or showing warnings. Um, in here, this is saying this is a feature built for third party applications with the privacy and compliance standards that differ from commitments outlined by Microsoft Office 365 Trust Center. Any data cache through this service does not confirm Microsoft data processing terms. And this is outside of Microsoft Office, Office 365 Trust Center compliant boundaries. So, Please be sure uh, that you're fine with those options. If you are, I can then enable uh, those settings. So let's actually write here. Oop, and let's actually write here an A. So we actually are fine uh, for enabling the CDN. And the same applies for the other executions. So one for the public and one for the private. And there we go. Uh, <clears throat> and good to notice here. Uh, we are saying explicitly files of a type GIF, ICO, JPG, JPG, uh, JS, PNG is stored in the locations configured to serve as a private CDN. Uh, origins will now also be served and cached from the content delivery network. So there are clear warnings uh, uh, around the around the settings. Now, for private, uh, we enabled 
by default these two, two uh, origins so user photo aspx and site asset so if you would place any images or javascript files as an example to this uh, site assets folder and you would reference then using a relevant uh, relative path within a page uh, those would automatically be served using the cdn for public option uh, if you scroll slightly down uh, the default options are master page and style library uh, and these are then exposed using anonymous access uh, using the public cdn uh, the private cdn is uh, always requiring authentication so it is actually checking that the user has the right permissions to those site assets uh, when they're being served uh, from the cdn as well maybe one thing to notice here and uh, just kind of a mention uh, just be sure that whenever you're publishing any assets uh, from site assets uh, you have a one uh, major version pop list of that asset as well uh, because you will need to have a major version available of the image or javascript file uh, or whatever it is um, so it will be actually served using the cdn <clears throat> now moving along on the configuration so we now enabled both public and both private uh, cdn within this tenant so we can actually set some of the uh, check some of the configurations for this so let's actually get uh, configuration for the uh, for the public cdn so get SBO tenant CDN policies and here we can see a few different additional configurations which you can control so include file extensions uh, so default file extensions which would be served from the CDN origins in the public CDN case because we executed CDN type public uh, and then exclude restricted site classifications so this is something with where you can actually say that hey if the site is classified to be let's say high business impact site let's not serve anything outside of the uh, from the public uh, cdn and then there's a third option exclude if no script disabled so exclude this site if no script uh, option has been disabled um, kind of a uh, difficult thing to figure out what does it mean but it's the no script uh, option uh, by default for example for modern sites the no script is enabled for classic sites, it was by default disabled uh, uh, in, in the classic site, but it really depends on, on your tenant settings as well. For the private, uh, if we have a look on quickly on those settings as well, uh, settings are slightly different. So the include file extensions are slightly different. So by default in the private one, we have GIF, ICO, JP, JPG, JavaScript, and PNG. So these are static assets which typically do not contain any confidential information. They're images and JavaScript files, which is business logic, but it's not actually confidential information. Uh, for private CDN, uh, the permissions do apply, so it doesn't actually matter if you're serving them from there. For public CDN, those information, all of these files are essentially available for anonymous requests, uh, as long as somebody knows the URL. And the request is coming from a SharePoint Online as a referrer for the HTTP request. So this is a really important thing uh, to see as well, and you'll see this one in practice uh, in the in the demo when we actually take these settings into use. So whenever you're referencing these files, this only works when the referrer is SharePoint.com, uh, so the tenant admin uh, so SharePoint Online URL. So you cannot actually reference CSS files or GIF files or JPG files from SharePoint Online if you would be want to host them, for example, in a custom web application in Microsoft Azure. So this is specifically designed for SharePoint Online and the pages in the SharePoint Online. So the CDN, is CDN service is checking that the referrer is correctly set. And I'll show you that one in practice when we get to the site and, and configure and start using actually the CDN assets. Good, so right now uh, we kind of went through the default uh, CDN origins and what the CDN origin is, is that, hey, this is a location where the, where the assets will be published to the CDN. So by default, uh, the CDN origins for public were, for example, uh, was the master page uh, and master page and also the uh, style library configuration so any master page gallery and a style library configuration within a tenant would be by default served from a public cdn and again you can configure this up to you uh, what what is your settings in my case i want to actually slightly uh, configure the settings because i want to have a one specific folder 
which I'm going to use as my public CDN uh, origin. And then for my publishing site, I'm going to uh, configure an additional uh, CDN origin from where my images will be then served uh, dynamically using the private CDN option. So let me actually execute this one by one, so we're not uh, causing additional conf uh, confusion. So let's actually get in here, uh, write an A, Oop. and let's actually my configuration. There we go. Now we can actually get it done. So adding that one there, and it's actually saying us an exception. So CDN origin path must point to a SharePoint library. And the re this is actually as expected, and this is good to know as well. So this is a great way of checking that your URL is properly configured. So right now, this is assuming that I have a site, a CDN site, underneath the site's path, and then I have a CDN folder or a library within my site. And currently that's actually missing. So let's go and create that and reconfigure this. So here we are uh, in the right location. I'm going to zoom in slightly. So we can see that we are in my test tenant and the CDN site slash CDN as the URL. So let me go to the site contents and let me create my specific document library, which I will then configure as my CDN origin. So let's call this CDN, as simple as it gets. There we go. And obviously this document library can be anywhere within your tenant. Uh, it can be, and where you can use wildcard matching uh, on the configuration as well. So this is pretty flexible from that perspective. So there we go. Now we have a URL which is my tenant URL site CDN CDN. So we can actually go back on the, the PowerShell and enable that location. And this time uh, we should not actually get that exception. And it is asking again and confirmation on it. So let's click A or say yes to all. And the configuration will be applied. And a good thing to notice here, uh, it is actually outputting the default current uh, of uh, uh, the CDN origins uh, and my just added CDN origin is here listed as site CDN CDN with an entry of configuration pending. So this means that the configuration is now already applied on SharePoint Online side and now SharePoint Online is connecting to the CDN service and it is waiting for that configuration together with CDN service to be completed. And let's do the same for my uh, purposing uh, and for private uh, private CDNs. I'm going to do that one there as well. I'm going to show that one in a demo. What does it actually then mean as well? So configuration for the private CDN, adding that entry there. Oh, and I'm missing actually an origin path. So let's actually go to that side as well and create a new folder so we can actually make this happen and we are in the right location good uh, so let me create here for example assets doesn't really matter what's the document library name in this case so let's get that one created and let's configure that as a CDN origin shouldn't take too long there we go there's my assets there's my URL so I'm gonna actually take that URL so I don't have any typos in my execution Flipping back on the PowerShell, adding that one there uh, properly. There we go. Let's get rid of that leading uh, char and execute that one to my tenant as well. There we go. Execution. And now we get a list of CDN origins. And there we go. There's the default settings for CDN origins in a private site. So the user photo uh, site assets uh, for publishing sites. And then does, there, there is my additional new configuration uh, for my purposing site. Now, the configuration pending uh, can take up to 15 minutes to get completed. It really depends again on the how these two services, the SharePoint Online and the CDN service are talking between each other. Um, so we'll kind of pause the video until we are in the situation where the configuration pending has been completed. So let's actually double check that one. Um, so for example, the public uh, one is still in configuration pending stage most likely there we go it is configuration pending so let's pause the video until that is completed and then we can see the urls and how we can take the cdn into use in our sites
So now, if we actually re-execute this one, uh, we can see that the, our CDN origins for the public CDN uh, has already applied. So the configuration has been applied uh, accordingly. And let's double check the private CDN setting as well. So that the configuration has been applied for that one as well. So there we go. Now we can see that the site pop 35 assets has been configured and the site CDN CDN has been configured as well. So at this point, uh, the both CDNs are already fine. Uh, we're not actually going to move into removing these CDNs uh, or origins or disabling the uh, CDN. But in practice, you can use the remote uh, remove SPO tenant CDN origins uh, with the CDN type and the origin URL is the identifier for specific origin. Or you can disable the whole functionality, uh, the public CDN or the uh, private CDN using these settings as well. Good. So what does it actually mean in practice? So let's go first uh, in this site. So the CDN, CDN, let's have a look on the public CDN. How does it actually work in practice? So I'm going to move back on my uh, browser. Let's go to the CDN site. Uh, so here we go. Here's our CDN origin, which has been now configured as the CDN origin for the public CDN. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to track and drop one image uh, in here. And there we go. So let's track and drop that image in. That's just a, a typical PMP uh, square logo. Uh, so SharePoint PMP logo. So let's actually uh, close that one. And now what we can do is that we are able to reference this logo uh, using uh, the public CDN URL. And we're able, able to format that by ourselves. So let me actually uh, rename this slightly to be slightly more easily referenced uh, so I can more easily reference that. So let's do just logo BNB is, is fine for that. So I can show how it works in practice. So the public CDN works in a way that you're able to reference these assets uh, within your uh, customizations by using the public CDN. And the public CDN is kind of a guarantee to remain the same. The URL format uh, is as follows. Uh, so if I copy the basic structure, uh, here we go and show you that. Well, let me actually zoom in on this one. So you can actually see the URL format having a prefix of public CD and SharePoint Online dot com, then the tenant host name, and then sites as and sites and, and sites slash site slash library. Or if you're pushing your, uh, uh, hosting your stuff in the root site or root location, then it would be just uh, slash library uh, in here as well. So let's actually have a look on that one in practice. So how do I reference that location uh, where we have this logo using this URL mask? So let's actually take that one and change this a bit. So I'm going to actually take the URL, which is the vesaj at uh, sharepoint.com and update that one in the URL. Then it's sites. CDN is the site actual site name. So let me update that. Oop, and let me update that uh, properly. CDN library name. Oop, let's actually fix that typo over there. Library name is CDN. And then we actually rename that as BNG, logo.bng. So that should be now the URL uh, for uh, that image, which is now hosted from the public uh, public uh, CDN through our Office 365 CDN configuration. So that means that I can actually reference that uh, image or JavaScript file uh, using uh, that this path uh, within my customizations or within my content as well. So let's actually test that one in practice. So if I create a new page and I want to reference an image on that page, so here we go. Uh, so let's add an image here as well. Uh, and let's actually just uh, do an image uh, from a link it actually inside so actually from a link past past link to the one uh, on SharePoint online not like that let me actually show you that in an alternative way so let me actually go to the site contents let me create an alt uh, classic page so I can more easily demonstrate this in practice so let's come in here let's create a wiki a wiki page classic SharePoint page and I'm gonna put a image in here as well. So let's name the space as test.aspx. 
And then let's insert a picture from address. And now if I use that URL in here, uh, so copy that URL with a public CDN prefix, uh, my tenant name, the, the location and logo PNG. If I click OK, and if I click save, we can actually see that the image is properly uh, available in here. And I can actually copy the image URL or, or copy image address. Uh, and if I come in here, we can actually see that it's coming from the right location. So this way we know that it's coming actually from the public CDN. One thing to notice here is that if I now take a random uh, browser and just paste in this uh, BNB logo here, it works now because I've actually accessed that already once in the page. Uh, but typically, um, well, typically when you reference these files and you will always need to, I wouldn't say typically, you will always need to have a refer referrer uh, coming from a SharePoint uh, online. So only way you can actually make this work is that uh, you are hosting the, or referencing these images and assets uh, from the pages which are located in here. So as an example, let me upload another file in here. So if I go to the CDN folder and let's reference or add an, an a file which is a PNP dude, PNP, uh, PNG. And let's actually build that properly the URL as well. BNP dude uh, PNG without any typos. BNP dude PNG. There we go. And if I now try to request that one, it will actually give me an exception, which is invalid referrer. And this is as expected because I'm actually trying to reference the BNP dude outside of the context of SharePoint Online. Uh, so the referrer has to be sharepointonline.com uh, to make all of this uh, to work properly. Now, if I, however, put this one on the page, so let's actually update that one uh, and reference that in the context of SharePoint Online. Picture uh, from address and paste that one in. And there we go. Because the, we are requesting the image or assets from a context of SharePoint Online, this actually works properly, and there's our PMP do it rendered properly within the UI. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can use this uh, the public CDN, for example, for hosting JavaScript files, images, static images, logos, uh, all of that stuff. Uh, it is the, all of these assets are publicly or anonymously accessible. Um, so people, uh, so you need to kind of be aware of that one as well. And this is for static files and static assets, so not for ASPX files or .master page files, because those are dynamic uh, uh, files which are not, which require server-side operations to get compiled. Uh, one of the use cases, for example, for public CDN is to use them for hosting SharePoint framework, uh, client-side web part, JavaScript files, and other assets like the JSON files and related on client-side web points. So, as an example, you could just as well uh, in the CDN create a folder for all of the web parts. So, uh, <laughs> something like hello world, hello world web part, and then reference this URL dynamically within the uh, client side web part manifest, and then all of the static files would be downloaded from here using the public CDN. Cool. So what about the public uh, private CDN? So private CDN is something which is double checking or checking the permissions of the user which is requesting uh, the assets. So whenever at the page, the publishing page is being rendered, it is actually at that time uh, checking that the person who is requesting that page is having access on that location and which is the private CDN. And if that's the case, then we'll render uh, these uh, assets using the private CDN location. And the CDN, uh, it doesn't matter if you're trying to request that uh, that URL, which will be in the private CDN using uh, just a, well, after it has been resolved, uh, it doesn't work because the private CDN requires that you are authenticated against uh, the SharePoint online and the folder where the assets are being hosted. So let's uh, do the same setup, almost the same setup for private CDN as well. So this is the, the private uh, publishing site, uh, and I'm actually in the, I've already configured this one as my uh, CDN origin for private CDN. 
So that was the BUP35 and assets uh, as the folder which is configured in the private CDN site. So let me track and drop uh, an image here as well. So let's use the BNB square small image. Uh, <clears throat> and in this case, I'm not going to reference this because I actually I cannot reference this dynamically or by using just the rewriting of the URL because that, that uh, URL is changing a bit uh, between the requests. So what I need to be do doing is create a new page within my publishing site. And if I reference these assets using a relative path, uh, they will be automatically resolved uh, using the private CDN. So let's do that one in practice. So I'm going to go to the pages library of my publishing site. And let's create a new page uh, in here. Oh, there we go. There we go. So let's create a new page in my publishing site. Uh, let's uh, add a page. Let's call this for example, CDN demo. I'll test as well. I could have done that uh, in the site contents view, but that's fine. So let's call the CDN uh, demo as the page and let's create the page here as well. And that's going to then open up the page whenever the page is uh, available. So it's getting created on the pages library and then, then it's going to open up the page. Because I want to reference the image directly in my page so that my uh, all the rewriting of the URL works, uh, which is enabled by default for the publishing pages. So I need to actually reference that relatively within the page. And the easiest way, obviously, to do that is just quickly to switch uh, my page layout to image on right, as an example, and then reference that image from the assets folder or library, in this case, which has been enabled as a CDN origin. So we can actually see in practice how the, the image URL will be automatically transformed to come from a private CDN. So let's go and select the image. And my location was the assets folder on by default here. So let's click that one as well. Uh, or let's click that one and insert. So I can actually see that image uh, being rendered on my page. There we go. There's my image uh, and I can publish the page. So let's actually save the page. And in this case, I didn't have versioning enabled on that library so that there is a major version available of that asset automatically. Uh, in the site uh, style library case, there is actually major versioning enabled, so you will need to make sure that your assets have been uh, published as a one major version to make them visible through the private CDN. Um, and in my case, well, we can do publish here as well. So the page itself is getting uh, getting deployed as well as a major version. That's not specifically required for the scenario, but still uh, that's a typical case just to make the page available within the publishing site. So now if I right click this one and copy image address and uh, let's move to our notepad, uh, we can actually see the image address being changed. Uh, so the image, I referenced the image using the relative path and I can actually see that it's now being automatically served using the private CDN URL which means that it's getting served from the private CDN, from the CDN locations across the world. So essentially meaning that the files will be loaded faster. Uh, we can still see that uh, the URL prefix is pretty much the same as for the private CDN, but then there is the additional configuration which relates on the permissions and, and handling, automatic handling of the private CDN. So additional additional configuration on the end of the URL, but which you don't need to worry about, but, and that's actually the, the chip part which is changing dynamically. So that's the reason why if you reference this image using this URL now, it will work for a while, but after a while it won't anymore work because there's a life cycle for these URLs. So the private CDN is something which you cannot really control. Uh, it can be enabled, but you can't control the URL of the private CDN. And uh, just to show uh, this one in practice also in the developer tools, so if we have a look on the page uh, in the Chrome developer tools as an example, uh, we can see the private CDN SharePoint Online, and if I extend that, uh, we can see that we have the image available. So the prefix for the URLs is private CDN SharePoint Online, and there's our 
there is our CDN origin from the private side and there's our image and it's getting served uh, correctly from a page. Good. That actually sums up the demo, which we're planning to be doing, uh, walking through the different configurations. Uh, just quickly jumping back in here, I kind of uh, went this through already, but just to mention, uh, we do have the remove uh, remove SPO tenant CDN origin uh, works in the same way. You define the CDN type and then the origin URL, so you're able to actually uh, get rid of these settings. One thing to notice on this is that when you are removing uh, this uh, CDN origins, there is a caching still applied. So if I now, for example, if I now remove the CDN, uh, public CDN, we will actually see a message here which is saying content stored in the document library site CDN CDN is no longer served by content delivery network. While the effect is immediate, caching content still, uh, cached content will still be available in the CDN and accessible everyone anonymously up to 30 days. And this relates on the client side caching. And it's really good to know that it's actually uh, the default settings, uh, the default settings of this. The private CDN, uh, almost the same story, uh, but uh, the caching content uh, is slightly different. So the caching timeout is uh, one hour. Uh, here we go. Content uh, stored in the document library, pop file 35 assets is no longer available from CDN. Cached content will still be available in the CDN for up to one hour. Uh, and after that, uh, that request from a page, if you would request specifically that URL would not actually work. Now, what's really important to realize that the private CDN, when you disable or remove the content origin from a private CDN, it will automatically fix this, uh, the page request. So the following time I will go to the page and request this uh, publishing page. If I request this one again, this image is not actually coming from a private CDN. It is coming directly as a referenced image uh, from the location. So if we have a look again on the URL, and let's have a look on that one as well. It's still on the private, but pretty soon it is actually updating itself automatically, recognizing that, hey, the CDN origin has been removed for the private CDN, so therefore, I'm not going to render that through the CDN. I'm going to render that through uh, the, the normal URL without any additional configuration what you should be doing. From a content user and a content editor perspective, you are working on the page like you used to do. So no changes from that perspective. You're just referencing an image from the location and the private CDN configuration is taking care of the URL rewriting the CDN or not URL rewriting the CDN. And then uh, coming back on the PowerShell, I can op absolute, uh, we can absolutely also disable the CDNs. So we are able to get both of these disabled. So let's get that one disabled as well. And also the private CDN disabled in this tenant. Uh, in my case, it doesn't really matter, but just from a demonstration perspective, now the CDNs have been uh, disabled. And that's it. We're good to go. So we worked through all of the different commandlets. Uh, we did a quick demo on, from a UI perspective for both publishing, so the private CDN, and also how did we reference uh, the, the assets using the public CDN. We are releasing updates on the documentation as we move along. Uh, there will be documentation updates uh, depending on when you're watching the video, obviously, uh, through support of channels and also the, the official MSDN documentation as well. But hopefully you'll find uh, the demonstration useful uh, and this will help you to understand how to get started with Office 365, uh, 365 CDN and how to configure the different settings around the CDN configuration. Thank you.